You are now listening to For All Nerds Show, a podcast about geek and pop culture from the perspective of people of color. For All Nerds is hosted by DJ Ben Amin and Tatiana Keen Jones. For All Nerds Show is a member of the Loudspeakers Network, where we always say rest in peace to our founder, Combat Jack. For All Nerd Show is powered by our listeners. Everything we do from our podcasts, live events, our website are all independently funded. Please continue to support us through our Patreon page at patreon.com slash for all nerds. Welcome to the For All Nerd Show. And what's up, y'all? And welcome to this very extremely special episode of the For All Nerds Show. Ah, yes. The voice of Irving Geek, the podcast where we discuss geek and pop culture according to the perspective of people of color. And as always, in the captain's chair, it's your boy, DJ Ben Amin, a.k.a. 4DMX, Project Pat McAfee, <laughs> Lego My Echo, <laughs> Mad Negro, Slade Trilson, Big Dick Grayson Energy, mm-hmm. author of Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze. Yes. Here in the spaceship tonight. Thank you all for joining us. And as always, I'm joined by Tatiana King, a.k.a. Tatiana Kang, the Conqueror, the coldest winter soldier ever. Doc Aki, Tesseract Thompson, Luanda Vision, Doctor doing something strange or some change and T'Challa Bread. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. And we are back. We got a very special episode. It feels like it's been a while since we've been here. We've been here last, we were here last week. <laughs> okay. It just honestly. We, it, we, we, we've literally been out every week. <laughs> it. I mean, I don't know. It just feels like, you know, it's been a minute since I've seen you. I'm not sure nah. you know, what it is, you know. Um, I know we were supposed to attend a certain movie screening tonight that, we, you know, unfortunately we couldn't make it to. Shout out to those people who invited us to that. You know, sorry about that. You're right. Just I mean, put us out there. We didn't have to mention it at all. <laughs> I mean, I said a certain one. You know, I didn't say that, you know, we went to this one or oh, that one. Boy. It was just a certain one. You know, <laughs> okay. And also, who knows what night we recorded this? You know, that's a multitude of nights mm. that this could have been recorded on. Mm. Gotcha. Mm. There we go. So, you know, shout out to y'all. You know, sorry we couldn't make it. I had a contract at my house today. Actually, that's seriously, that was really what was going on over here. Are you here, doing so. something in there? Are you knocking down walls? What you doing? No, not yet. Uh, we were just getting some lights replaced. It's been a long time oh. coming, actually. That shit. But you we had a squirrel like a... in our roof. A squirrel? Oh, okay. Yes. I was thinking you in there building a danger room or something. Not yet. No, once okay. again, not yet. I'm coming soon. But coming no, we soon. did have... Okay. We, I mean, the squirrel on our roof for a little while was our own version of a danger room. Straight up. <laughs> that was a Brooklyn-ass danger room. Because going in that bathroom where the squirrel wasn't happening was a danger room. Well, I mean, was it coming down and like no, a, like, it was just the, it was the pen, potentiality of it, you know, <laughs> the noise that a squirrel makes when it's trapped in your roof is, or not trapped when it's living in your roof. And scratching noise is kind of like there's there. I have actually some of them on video. Shit. There are noises that I just did not know what was going on, but I would go up, you know, put the video next to my bathroom ceiling so I could kind of. You know, I wanted other people to be able to hear this, but I've never shown anyone because it's terrifying. I think one of the <laughs> squirrels I mean was killing another squirrel. Of a squirrel. I'm not sure, you know, <laughs> exactly what was going on. Yeah. But there was some type of battle going on up there, and it was not good. And it was, it was a battle Harvard. for its life. It was probably stuck in some vent or some shit. What the fuck? But I don't know. I think it was two of them. And all right, now the thing is, we've since patched a hole up, and the squirrel no longer can get into our roof. But wow. I still see the squirrel, and they've now made a home on one of my neighbor's roofs and in, you know, inside of their house. So you know, you're like, fuck them. They, yeah. <laughs> they, could, they could deal with they it. They got to deal with that one, friend. We had to deal with it. Now you got to deal with it. You know, keep on. Sorry. 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 Excellent. Yeah. I wasn't going to murder the squirrel or anything. Okay. Um, I was over in LA. I went to Rolling Loud oh, Music shit. Festival. Oh, look I, at you. I didn't even know. Yeah. Um, I gave it, I gave it like a B minus C. Um, wow. I actually, the Miami Rolling Loud is better for me. Um, mm-hmm. The best performance by far was Big Sean. Big Sean wow. did his thing. Like, would never expect to hear that. What you would think that, but like, here's my cons- my issue. Like, I go to most of the festivals, so yep. I, you know, I, for many years now, so I have a like uh, an understanding of how 
and also loving music, right? And understanding production and stuff like that. And there's a few things that tend to happen at festivals, unfortunately, especially when it's artists that you want to see. I don't know whether it's just like a fuck you to the fans or uh, I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. I'm going to do what I do. The set list, the choices, mm-hmm. a lot of times yeah. the choices in the set list do not reflect what people actually want to hear. I also understand that artists tend to use things like festivals to test out their new shit or let people hear it. But it's just like, I've also seen instances where artists do whole sets of new shits and it's just like, no, I did not idea. just pay hundreds and really thousands if you count in like travel and hotel and all that stuff. I didn't pay all this money to hear you fucking, you know, sing into a, a fucking drum. Like I, I wanted to hear you. I wanted to hear some classics. If you want to do some new shit, throw it in there or do some vibey shit. Like a song that we all know and love, but you remixing it. You put it into a new beat. You're doing some live instrumentation on stage. Like, give me something. Give me something live. Instead, it's always something weird. And I, like I said, it's weird or it's just like you're just doing stuff. It's like, why would you not play your most hypest song? Why would you not play the songs that your, your supporters really want to hear? And I don't understand, like sequencing as well like maybe you don't want to open with your biggest banger maybe you want to end that way maybe Mm -hmm. you want to throw it in the middle there's reasons i get it it's just that when you just to me squander that time i'm like okay that wasn't worth me being here but thanks anyway um but yeah big sean he was the he had the best absolute best set out of anybody just in terms of just being well-rounded playing what the fuck we wanted to hear and also being just being a good performer. He, yeah. he was, and he made every, he kept people entertained. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. And that's the other part. And some of them like would do well with entertaining people, but then, you know, then it get, got repetitive and, you know, it was all right. Um, I did also enjoy a couple of other performances. Like I liked Big X The Plug. I liked um, some of the newer artists that were there. Um, Don Tolliver was was all right. Um, I did the the very last set was Metro Boomin and Future. They bought out a few people. Um, I mean, I I absolutely love Metro Boomin. Like, yeah, he, he can do no wrong when it comes to music in my eyes. Um, but like I said, like it was it was some up and downs there, and up and downs in terms of like the festival itself, how it was laid out, stuff like that. But generally, I had a good time. So that's why I said like B minus sometimes to C. Yeah, it's, it's pretty low. Mm. And I mean, I it, like Big Sean. I've had better experiences. I'm sure, obviously. So, yeah. shit, I sound like I had a better experience last year when I went to um, Some Fest in Jamaica. I would oh, give that like a, yeah, I would give that like a B plus. And I only would did that a B plus and not an A because I fucked up the first night and then buy a chair. And some, you know, the chair is only like 20 bucks, but Some Fest goes till, you know, God knows. So they it's let y'all like, bring fold up chairs. Yeah, and everyone has one because once again it goes till God knows. Like we got there at like midnight, and nigga wasn't like you know it wasn't even well, like this Jamaican. So yeah, yeah, you know what it is. So it wasn't even like I mean, by the time I left the first night, I didn't see any major acts. It was still nothing but opening acts. I was about to say they don't know? come to like three in the morning. Yeah. So the second night we had our chairs and we was all good, and I saw all kind of cats that night. So that mm. was, you know, that was so. Now that I know about some fest, oh yeah, if I win again, I just bring mm-hmm. folding chairs because you know you got the, the trees; it's plentiful, yeah. it's beautiful. So, yeah. Yeah. oh, shout outs to Two Rare. Two Rare set was really really fun, and they they were on the smallest stage. You know, there mm-hmm. was three stages. You yeah. know, the big main stage, like that's where Big Sean and 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 Future and all them was on. Mm-hmm. Then you get the little middle stage where you had people like um, that Mexican OT. I liked his set. I like mm-hmm. that Mexican OT. I, I think that that nigga. Excuse me, he's not a nigga, but I think he could rap. <laughs> Okay. And, you know, people like that, like Big S was there. But then the smallest stage, they call it the Culture King stage, that's when you had like more up and comers. And they have the smallest amount of people there. They, at most, they maybe had 50 people there, right? Maybe a little bit more, but people were into it. And I, and I wanted to see them. I, like, I knew about them. I just went over there, watched it, and it was fun. And that's why Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's the problem when artists get bigger, sometimes, like, just forget to have fun sometimes and just extend that fun to the people watching. Who was whack? Yeah. 
Um, you being too well, political. Well, the right people now. who were whack, I don't even think I was there for it. Like, to no, be honest there was with somebody you, whack because you, you, you wouldn't give it a you know C if there wasn't somebody that was. Well, like, nah. I, I, no, I think like who because was I funny? felt like it wasn't enough. Yeah, oh, who was? Oh, yeah. oh, let me back up. Yeah, who skr, was a skr, big? Skr, 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 skr. Who was a big artist who failed? So this is this is my problem. This maybe four weeks ago, this didn't exist, but there there was it's usually only three days. They added a fourth day, which was Thursday. Mm. And I, we, we we moved our entire schedule to get there an extra a day early. When I say wow. entire schedule, flights, hotel, everything. To see. No. To see. Okay. Yay and Ty Dollar Sign. Oh, shit. Did they even show? What did Professor X said? Maybe not in the physical, but in the metaphysical. And I say that to mean... <laughs> These niggas were kind of physically there, and yes, their, their presence, their body was there. I, I, Tatiana, I really got to question your judgment for moving to CA. <laughs> because maybe I wanted to see it because I actually like the Vultures album. I like the Vultures album. And I've I, heard and it's I, good. I just can't believe it. I don't think you sh- you should believe it. I love music. I want to see that nigga live. This because first of all. The last few times I have been to Rolling Loud, he was supposed to just be there yeah. naturally and like yeah. either didn't show up or show up on somebody else's set that I wasn't even at. Yeah. So I was like, no, I'm going to see this, right? Fuck it. it and, and you know why? Because it was quote unquote free. Because mm. I had yeah, a three-day okay. pass. So it was nothing extra I had to do besides just be there. Be there. So I was yeah. just like, fuck it. Why not? So that's how you. the way I went about it. But when I say these niggas did absolutely nothing. They gave nothing. They literally did not perform. It was as if we were at a listening party. Mm. They rolled out to the time to build a whole new stage, separate stage in the middle of every goddamn thing, just for him and, and Ty. And when I say they had on there all black in the mask and did nothing, I saw as we How were How could you be sure it was them? Because Ye actually took off his mask. Okay. So I was like, all right, fine. And that's funny, because that, that was the one thing we said. We said, that's not really them niggas. So that was the first thing we was mad about. Then, as I'm coming up, I'm listening to the playback. I only hear playback. I don't hear feedback from the mics. I don't hear voices echoing. Even people saying, hey, yo, rolling loud, 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 loud. I don't hear none of that. I just hear the playback. So I'm like, maybe it's just me. As I'm getting closer, it don't get no better. And as I get close enough to really see these niggas, they are walking around in fucking circles, holding the mic to their sides while smoke billows around them. There are thousands of people just standing there looking dumbfounded for over an hour. And I literally stood there for 20 minutes. Did they play the old there. shit or they just played that album? No, they played Vultures. It was all Vultures. But it was like a listening party without any type of performance. I stood there for maybe 15, 20 minutes and said, fuck this shit and went over to the merch line because I was so fucking pissed. Then within, I don't know, 20, 30 more minutes, they was done. And then their DJ started playing Kanye songs. No schoolboy Q? Damn. I'm just saying, people I want to you know, would have wanted to see right now. Yeah. No. So if you want to talk about people who fucking just well, yeah. wasted the, my time. Expected there. Sorry. No shots, but yeah, pretty much expected at this point in this career. Wasting your time. Rolling Loud said perform. That's why I was just like, okay, at least you're going to yell a little bit. And my nigga can even give th- that decency to do that. I can't lie. Like, I like the joint of Freddie Gibbs, you know, because Gibbs kills it. And the hook is hilarious. To the yeah, Dalton the hook is sample. hilarious. Yeah. yeah. But when he did that listening party and North was on stage with him. But she's on the ter- song. Let me finish. And these terrible <laughs> ass lyrics, you know, about all She's kind of 10? shit. You know, it's just being How poured out of the speakers. It's it, like I don't care. Kanye cannot rap at all anymore. Like he is. Oh, you butt said ass. anymore? I was just yeah, like, whoa, butt ass. The, okay. No, butt ass. Like butt ass. Like I'll never forget when uh, what he called dropped. Um, father stretched my hands, and I was sitting there that listening pissed, to that, it. To this dirty ass yeah, shit. Yeah, we talked off. about it on that other show, but you know, yeah, yeah real quick. And I was same thing. I called my boy up like this one of the greatest songs I've ever heard, and then this nigga started rapping and <laughs> ass. And it's the greatest ass, song ever. Ever. And, then, and this nigga started rapping ass. <laughs> so I'm not, that's why I'm saying I wasn't, I'm not even looking for Donda. But anyway, moving on. Sorry, they, well, not sorry, not so, sorry. Sorry, not, not sorry. sorry. Yeah. I made that mistake. Never again. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, on some other real quick pop culture news that really popped off um, Beyonce. Ain't nobody finer than Beyonce. Uh, 
you know, I gotta say that every time. Dropped, I guess this is the cover or one of the covers for This is the cover of Cowboy Carter. This is act two of Renaissance. So this is the official This only is the cover. cover. This is the there cover for the album. The, there ain't gonna the, be another one where she dressed up in the red, black, and green. I don't know. It could be. First of all, this is I'm Beyonce. Hoping. She gonna have triple, quadruple, yeah. quintuple That's drops figured, if she wants. Yeah. But this is this is the for the album coming out in what nine days. So wow, impressive. Yeah. Yep. Uh. Well, yeah. She dropped uh a cover where she is dripped out, draped out in the American flag. Yeah, she's wearing People, red, white, and blue, and then yeah. has a big American. She's holding a big American flag because it's reminiscent of the, the rodeo. Yeah, you people know? already showed the pictures of of a young black woman who's at the rodeo. And yeah, and, she, and you know how they 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 walk in with, the, a, with, the, with the colors and, yeah. and you know the color guard. And as a Houstonian, you know who grew up in you know Houston, Texas, in Third Ward, Beyonce's neighborhood, and mm-hmm. you know attended the rodeo multiple times. It is what it is. You know, it's a big part of Houston. I still was like. Oh. That shit whack. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can understand, especially as a black person that's not like Candace Owens, but especially as a black person in this country that you're gonna have a knee jerk reaction to seeing that, like, especially being Beyonce, you know, especially because she she represents this ideal for a lot of people, and then it's just like, oh, but you're dripped out in American flag. My thing is this: I feel like there's there's so many different things going on. One, obviously, it's purposeful, right? It could be, in my head, it could be one of the ways to interpret it. It could be a fuck you. A fuck you to everyone who never, as she had said in her post on IG for it, that the people who did not let her make her feel welcome or mm. and made it clear that she wasn't welcome in quote unquote their space, which is really our space because we made country music, right? We originated that shit. So yeah, All it, music. That too. But a fuck you, right? Just to say, look. I, you know, I, I'm doing this shit. I'm taking this shit. She has the number one on the Hot Country singles chart. You understand? And I don't know how many weeks it's been, or it's only been it's one been week or whatever. It's been several weeks. Like she's been number one. This she is like her biggest one. song since they said "Crazy in Love." I think. Right. And it's like her also, second biggest song ever. It might be her biggest song ever now. Maybe as a and single. Also, from that caption sheet that I just quoted, people were saying, "Yo, that's a reference to what happened at the CMT Awards years back mm-hmm. when she did the song with the chicks, and there was." All that ah 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 from people talking about oh she not country and she shouldn't have yep. been there. and also people them people also didn't like the chicks too so because they didn't like them talking about George Bush and all that other stuff so they they was just mad at the whole situation mm-hmm. and as I said a black woman sitting there doing country so for for her in one way of interpretation is look I am this I am America I am everything and i even love what she said she went on she said this is not a country album this is a Beyonce album. Do you know what kind of bitch you have to be to be your own fucking genre? Okay? And that's what I fucking love about like like the audacity because she can. Because yeah. she does and she did. And that's fine. Um, also, just from general aesthetics, like you want to look at a very surface level. She's a, she's a cowboy carter, okay? What is cowboy? Cowboy is one of the greatest American exports. And that that's that's even to this day, they see a cowboy. Overseas, you think that must be an American. That's what America stands for. So, of course, the fucking flag is going to be there. Uh, on that note, real quick, shout out to D. Chico Leo, who mm-hmm. always used to point out on Fall Nerds, this is true facts, more than one in three cowboys black. were black. Mm-hmm. More mm-hmm. than one in three. So, like, but 1. erasure. 5. Yeah, complete erasure. So, yeah, back to Cowboy yeah. Carter. I really like that title for that. Yeah, that, and that shit goes hard. And, mm-hmm. I, like, and... You know, again, uh, it's kind of surface level, but also obvious. Like, like I said, it's fuck you, and also to piss people off, and also to start the discourse because obviously there's going to be people both who are fans and or not fans who are going to feel a way about it. Like, why would you stand up behind a flag and this, that, and that? But my thing is like, we also it's a, it's a double edged sword because, for example, when we have our athletes and they're about to be in the Olympics over in France, when you have our athletes and they represent America and win for America, more often than not, what is behind them? What are they waving? The American flag. You understand? And that doesn't take necessarily take away how they feel about black people or black liberation, if they're even a black liberation type person. It's just that it's this dichotomy that we're dealing with. And she is like the epitome of that. She has platinum blonde hair on a platinum blonde horse with a big ass American flag as if she's in the, you know, opening a rodeo with the color guard. Yeah. And I have my reservations and then you know about beyonce's politics i guess and but like musically i just think beyonce is one of the greatest artists 
ever, you know, and like the Michael Jackson of our time, you know, she whatever is. you want to call it. Yeah, like she's just one of the greatest things ever. So because of that, I really don't have much to say, you know, about what her politics is. I really just don't. I mean, it's like I would like her to be like um, someone pointed out that, you know, she's never really said anything about Palestine. She's never really said anything about Haiti, about anything, pretty much. You know, Beyonce plays are very safe. That's that may be true, um, mm -hmm. but she also the money goes too. Like the money yeah. goes where it goes. Like that is one thing that has never that is undeniable. She puts the money out there. Like yeah. I understand, and it's so interesting because people take people like Beyonce to task, and I and I think it's it's rightful to to do mm -hmm. that. Like you say, well, you got the platform, da da da. But you also can't dictate how people use their platform. She may not say anything about it in the way you want her to, but she's also. She's the capitalist at the end of the day. She's yeah, using that capital to make shit happen for her people. So if that's the way she does it, then that's the way she yeah. does it. Yeah. And I do do that. I mean, she has definitely empowered so many different black people over the years, you know, put man money into all kinds of people's pockets, et cetera, et cetera. And money is one thing, but I also am someone who says, use your voice when you have it. So that's true. Yeah. It's just, and, you know, you know, but she, but she, yeah. she, and again, you could, you could argue about how deep she could have gone or didn't go when she talks about black people or other mm -hmm. issues. But, you know, she, she, she ride for, as far as from what I've seen her actions, she ride for black people. Yes. And her music is for black people. And also, I'm really proud of her for reclaiming a lot of things. Like I said, the next thing she needs to do for part three is make a rock album. I think that's that's everyone's speculation that that's coming next. And I really hope so because I want her to reunite with Jack White and go crazy. Go no, fuck him. fucking crazy. Fuck Jack White. No, no, no. Fuck him. There's too many other black people. I don't, There's I'm plenty sorry. of black people. Yeah, I, I don't need I, I don't need Jack White I'm on that album. About, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> like, that bear is hard. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but yeah, there's so many other people who could do it better than Jack White is. I mean, I like Jack White too, but no. I guess it's not mutually exclusive. You can have both. <laughs> Me saying Jack White did not mean I wasn't thinking about no other black yeah, person. I know, that, that's I a just, given. I mean, the nigga's name is Jack White. Like, he's the white, he's the white <laughs> yeah, boy that went not on this on album. Song. Let's not go. on this album, God. Dude, well, he already had his chance. He, that's what I'm saying. The nigga, this nigga be, be white people around. all up and down the country album too. What do you mean? Oh no, I was thinking about. I was about to say he rolled around with Dave Chappelle. I was talking about uh, John Mayer. <laughs> <laughs> You don't confuse your white boys, bro. I mean, they both play guitar, you know, and are both like somewhat Weird. talented, but you know, there's also like you know privilege. So of yeah. course, but yeah. uh, but no, like, <laughs> obviously you, you you're gonna you're gonna see some incredible, and I really want, hope that she has some up and coming country like black country artists. What we're still going going mm. back to Cowboy Carter, I really yeah. hope. Like I think it's too late for her, but I want to see Tanner Adele do something with her. I love I love that girl. She's so fucking lit. Um, and there's a lot of like others that I hope that they made it to the album. So you think Toby and Nigwe is gonna be on this joint? Why Toby? I don't know that. No, look to me, that's another one. You know me, I'm one of the biggest Toby fans. But lately, his choices have been like, is he a country damn, person? Damn, nigga, never... you love this money, don't you? Like, you know, that's my. Well, that's my... I mean, he's getting. Listen, he 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 got in. He got in. I know. The, door. It the, just, the it capitalism hurts. door it opened up. Hurts. It, it does. Like it hurt. You ain't feels... gonna say no. Montclair, Montclair want to do a collab. You gotta with me? say Fuck no. It. Some things you got. All bags ain't good bags. Shout out to Cameron. He said it today, you know, like sure, all, but all bags you say, ain't no, good bags. He got bags. six kids, five or six kids, maybe eight. Who the fucking knows? He got kids <laughs> to feed, man. Can't lie. Fat, fat, pregnant Shout out every to five fat. seconds. So every five seconds, boy. Yeah, you right. You got kids to Damn feed, Damn it, man. boy. Shout out to my brother, who I'm not going to put their name out there right now, but they told me that this is how Hollywood gets you every time. He's like, the first thing they asked you is, yo, what's up with your kids? <laughs> That he's like, that's the first thing they ask you once you start opening doors. It's like, oh, so are you married? Do you have any listen, kids? Listen, there's a lot of questionable things going on with the, the personal life and stuff like that. But I will say his family is always there. His family is always with him. Whatever he's doing, they're there nine times out of ten. Yeah, the kids I mean, that and just the feels wife, like a brand at whatever. this point. So, yeah, no. Yeah, that's his brand. But even from the beginning, yeah. it was like that. It wasn't like he he trotted the kids out after the fact. No, like, you, he started I, with them there. You know me, daddy. I've been... You know, I was I know, championing this nigga. You that's know, like this is like from day one, that's first time I heard this nigga, I was like, "This is yeah. the this is the and, future." And the nigga can rap. However, yeah. comma, I know. questionable choices. And, and listen, there it is. At yeah. the end of the day, are you a capitalist or not? Nah? I've always been. You know, I don't know where I fall in that spectrum because I like I love <laughs> well, the him. Dome. Him. Oh, he's just pure, pure, on, pure, <laughs> on, pure. On, no question about it.
<laughs> me, you know, I love the dough, but it's like I don't love the dough like that. I just don't care about. No just, collabs with Montclair. I mean, if I Louis love, came God, up to you, said Ben, I want to nah, do a collab no. with you. Oh God, no, no, no! I gotta. Uh, I mean, but they, well, doesn't Pharrell run them <laughs> I didn't now? Know like, stutter. he said, well. But don't they like? Weren't they like part of slavery? You know, I mean, everything, 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 <laughs> everything evil. They did it right. Like, everything was part of somehow tied to slavery, or tied to yeah. this or whatever. I really like Montclair. Now that you know, <laughs> See? I just, I've, never, up, man, I've man. never had one of their jackets, and I always wanted. One. It was like I don't know, I don't know, but their jacket show is fun. Yeah, you give like, me, okay. Yeah, I mean, you you put my name on a Montclair, like come on, fam. I I might have. So to you like, blame him now? You you're not blaming him so much, huh? I don't blame Toby for anything he's made a lot of great music you know what i mean so like i said like just like with beyonce i'm you know their politics might suck to me but i don't expect much more i toby is more disappointing because i do expect a little more from him i don't you know, know why i know because like you said, he said from the day one be no, because, good shit. yeah because he's saying good shit now thing but from day one he's also said i'm going to make as much money as possible he's yes. never hit that that's why i was so, like nothing's changed so nothing's changed don't so, be surprised no I, I shouldn't be it's my fault just like I'm not surprised about this Nets news right here. Not at all. Talk about oh getting God. this money. Oh, God. <laughs> so I was perusing the Cap- internet. Capitalism. <laughs> I was perusing the internet. And your friend, Jonathan Majors, wow. is in hot water once again. <laughs> <laughs> What's he got into this week? <laughs> what happened this week on Dragon Ball? Yeah. <laughs> this nigga, uh, he's been now sued by Grace Jabari for alleged assault, battery, and defamation. Now, if you remember that that the trial that happened before, that was raised by the DA, right? If I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken. Um, and he and he was convicted um, of misdemeanors, yep. to be specific. But now she's come back, and this is now, because this is now civil, because when you're yep. suing people, you're talking about money at this point. Um, but But for alleged battery, alleged assault, battery, and defamation. For, Nigga, nobody a, knew who you were. How can he defame you? Stop. Stop. I mean, sorry. But as you said, from incidents dating between 2021 and 2023, 2023 is when everything popped off. Yeah, so 2021, how so can you defend So that was when the defamation you? started. How? Because, he didn't because know it you. became public and, you know, they, he's allegedly... In 2023, it became public. I didn't read public. the docket. I can't tell you specifically what they're pointing to, but she did say 2021, 2023, and she was a public name by that point, so... In 2021? Maybe 2022. I don't know how long it's been Maybe 22. All I know is, remember... Everything was really went to head last year, right? Yeah. 2023 was last year, so yeah. Um, regardless, I'm I'm not questioning about where this came from. That's what she wanted to do. Um, uh, I'm not questioning either. It came from the money. What whatever she wanted to do. Okay. Uh, it was I. The man is gonna get um sentenced next month mm. for the trial that he was convicted of back in December. Damn, it just yep. felt like it was just yesterday. Um. And, you know, during this, she just talking about how, like, all the times where he was angry and, you know, putting his hands on her. Wow. And being controlling, emotional abuse, all that <sighs> stuff. Um, And I thought this was so interesting, this last line in this article. They were like, though his acting career has taken a turn following his conviction, he recently attended the NAACP Awards last weekend with his girlfriend making good. They're still going strong. Um, yeah. Shout out to <laughs> Megan. Huh? Shout out to Megan. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, got to shout Coretta's, her out. Coretta? I mean, I wouldn't go that far, but, you know, it's just That's like, Coretta. she definitely has held him down after the convention, which was something that I did not expect, honestly. If I had gone for the bet, I would have said that's that would have been a wrap shortly after. No more public appearances. But Well, you know. considering they started publicly dating during the fire storm, I wouldn't expect anything less, like... Why wouldn't okay. you stick with him? You, as soon as he was in the, in the shit, that's when she appeared. So yeah, so I guess she like fuck it. Now I gotta ride this till he comes back like Bitcoin. Listen, um, <laughs> I want to talk about just just related to NWS. If you could have reminded me, shout out to Dustin Ross. Congratulations! Because actually, when I was coming back from LA, I ran into Dustin Look in the at airport. Dustin. Look at Dustin. Yes, of the friend zone. What's My the boy. For? I don't. I don't know what's going on. I ran into him. Um, um, he was actually also coming back from LA because he attended the NAACP awards. Um, he won the uh, award with him and Ebony K. Williams for their podcast. 
So no shit. I, yeah, so I wanted to congrat so I could, you know, congratulate him in person. But congratulations, Dustin. You know we love you. Damn, I and it was very nice to years, run into you. Man. It's been a minute. Yeah, I, I feel Happy like birthday I've run- to uh, Sean, um Sean Price. No, I mean Sean Price as well, but mm-hmm. hey, Asante is as well too. <laughs> yes. Also well, I saw Pisces. your post about Sean Price, but yes, yeah. happy birthday to Asante. Hey, Asante. Hey, I know it was a few days ago, but happy yep. birthday. Happy birthday to Sean Price as well. All the Pisces in the house. You know how we do. Word yes. Up. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I guess I just wanted to talk about something more like. Okay, you know, well, you know, a little more positive <laughs> news before we uh, take this quick break. Make sure I wanted, well, let me, first of all, let me thank everyone because we have been running this special promotion with anyone comics where you can get a signed copy of Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze. You can still get it. Pre-orders are still up and pre-orders have been through the roof. Mm -hmm. So I just really, really want to thank y'all because I know this ain't the cheapest comic book you could cop. You know, it's well worth it. Um, Today, I actually got the pretty much finalized PDF of the book. And so this is my first time getting to see it all together, you know, colored, lettered, everything. I mean, intro pages, outro pages. There's like script to story pages with my script pages in there. One of my favorite characters has uh, some back art, some behind the scenes art from Tom Mandrake. He's got a bunch of other just development art in the book. There's all this behind the scenes matter in the book that you get along with this great, you know, story and graphic novel that you're copping. So I, this is my first time seeing any of this shit. I didn't know what was actually making it into the book. Honestly, I had no clue. I knew there would be some script to um, art pages and shit, but I just didn't know what they were putting in there. So this is my first time seeing everything. The format mm. is really beautiful. I mean, everything about it. I got to see how the cover is laid out. Just everything. It's a really... It should be a really, really beautiful book. You know, like, I can't imagine. Shout out to Justin Prokovich, because I shout out Tom all the time. And this is the first time I got to see Justin's colors in full color, just everything that that man did. Mm-hmm. And they absolutely destroyed it. Like, they just, they, they, it's the color, like, coloring is such an underappreciated job in comics because it really, I, it makes you, it's how it leads your eye. It does a lot of work that, people don't understand you know and so you have to be able to balance all these things with like okay the characters dressed in a purple coat like jimmy is in some scenes Mm -hmm. so how do i balance that with the backgrounds and this and that and Mm -hmm. then how do i keep it to a a palette that everyone can fuck with and then have matching colors you know and color theory and all these type of things so shout out to justin because they're just some absolutely beautiful colors in this book Tom Mandrake, I talk about all the time. He's just a god. And then, you know, this is my first day when I've really read it beginning to end. You know, like, you're going to get to read it. And I was pretty pleased. (laughs) That's the understatement of the year. I'm mad critical on myself, y'all. And it's like, there's, there's a lot of concepts and ideas in this book that I really hope, you know, they're in my head. And I know what I was trying to say. But I'm not sure if it got to the page like I wanted to be said. And that's probably just something I'm always trying to wonder about until people start reading it and I get to hear what people think. Mm. So, you know, we'll see. But I there's a lot of this stuff that I'm very impressed with. I've said that many a time. You know, like, I really put think that me and Melo have created something super special. I was on Twitter today like, yo, I could see this as an animated movie or a series. There's a... When you read this story, it's a complete story in and of itself, but there's a huge universe that we've created for this Mm. graphic novel. So I really hope to explore more stories in this universe because I think people are going to want more stories in this universe. When you read it, you're going to be like, yo, but what about this character? And what are they doing now? Because we we tell some complete stories with these characters. And uh, there's Hendrix, there's Vesper and Raina, two sisters who are just two of my favorite characters that I've ever created. I'm fully in love with these two sisters, mm-hmm. and I really want to tell more stories about them. So, once again, thank you all, but please, everyone, go out and pre-order Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze. The link is always in my bio, at, DJ, at DJ Ben I mean on all social medias. You can hit up anyone comments. You can go direct to their website, type in Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze, and it comes right up. And you can pre-order it. Where I'm signing them all. 
And it looks like this is exclusive breaking news right here. We're doing something special with Tom Mandrake. Where yes. We might have like a book plate, which is like an inserted illustration that will be in each one. So it'll be like numbered type shit. So this could be some real exclusive shit. And that, all of them or just certain no, ones? No, no. All, all the ones that are come from anyone comments from the, from the signed orders. Got all it. these signed okay. orders are going to have some special stuff with Tom Mandrake in it. And we're trying to do some other things. I'll be announcing uh, uh, the actual signing. We're probably going to do a signing the night of, I want to say July 31st at anyone comics. So if you haven't got a pre-order or you just want to come and meet me, you know, we'll be doing that. And we're going to have another little, like a book release party somewhere else in Brooklyn around that same time. So I'll okay. talk about more of that as, you know, we get a little closer to that. Let day. me find out. Man, we do it a big, you know, going to be at San Diego Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con. I'm about to buy my tickets for, to get to Atlanta. I'll be at Dragon Con. Um, Once again, I'll say this, if you have a, comic book store anywhere in the world that you fuck with that are fucking with hindrance and we can get some books sold out of there let me know and i will come through there and do a signing i'm looking to travel and be everywhere and also shout out to everybody's podcast who i've jumped on in last week shout out to my man Prashawn who got the marvel snap podcast i was on there talking okay. about hendrix and all kind of stuff he has a really great show i really enjoyed that really great questions shout out to the back look podcast we talked about transformers the movie that was an amazing podcast shout out to zoe just a great time talking about that movie i mean we we got in depth on transformers the movie and it was very really great plus we talked hendrix oh cute oh, yeah fuck am i miss- i feel like i'm missing one other oh shout out to uh, american collins and drunk black history i jumped yes. on them a few weeks back and did that joint talked hendrix all we i mean we basically did the whole episode about Jimmy, the actual real life person. And then we also talked about the comic. And I'm doing a couple more, but if you have any podcast, I don't care how many listeners you got, I don't care what the subject is about, hit me up at DJ Bit. I mean, I'll jump on there as long as I can talk to someone on Hendrix. I'll talk about whatever else you want to talk about. Oh, yeah, me and you did a joint, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, we just did a, we did a joint where we talked. Um, Rap ruler. We talked about the rap ruler, my friend, the rap mm-hmm. ruler. But we talked about, or sh- yeah, I'll say it. We talked yeah. about um, college dropout. So basically, it's uh, it's really he has a really great podcast. So it's a great. podcast where Love it. he actually has a very a special system where he his guests rate album classic albums specifically. Mm-hmm. So like we go in through things like flow, um, composition sequencing of the album. Yeah. You know, just just all the like really detailed approaches to to rating and and doing an album like not a recap but what i'm trying to say like a review like really getting not too much in the weeds but like in the weeds that matter if that mm-hmm. makes sense yeah. so um honestly ben Amin and i had such a great time enough Amazing. that we didn't technically didn't finish so like we it's kind of a part one so we probably got to come back at some point and do a part two because we only I did think like we need to do another album we only did like half the qualifications so but maybe we we'll really do another covered album. them all yeah yeah because we said a lot but it, it's, it was really <laughs> fun we had a good time i i think it's entertaining we're always entertaining anyway it was funny um, and so we'll definitely get y'all the links when that show drops. We'll yep. post about it, all that stuff. Yeah, definitely. Great time on that. And like like we both said, we're always willing to guest on shows. But right now, I'm just looking to do every show possible. So please hit me up anytime at DJ Ben I mean, and we'll work it out. I already got one. I'm actually fucked around and missed my brother's show today. Like I said, I had this contract with the grip with all kinds of shit. Aww. So. Yeah, but we already just set it up for another time. So, you know, okay. shout out to that brother. You know, I'm, I, I will be there, I promise you. Because I really want to do that show, too. He's got a really dope uh, concept for his podcast. Uh, something about Wednesdays. I can't remember the goddamn name, though. But when I do it, I will make sure to let y'all know. Okay. All right. And with that, we're going to take a quick break. And we will be right back to talk about X-Men 97. This is Yvonne Chapman. I play Javon on Kung Fu's CW. When I'm not on set, I am listening to For All Nerds. This is Niamh and Niambi. When I'm not busy doing the acting thing, the writing, drawing, illustrating, I'm listening to For All Nerds. This is Shannon Houston, writer on HBO's Lovecraft Country, and you are listening to For All Nerds. This is Malcolm Spellman, head writer of Falcon and Winter Soldier. You are listening to For All Nerds. It's Ihoma. 
writer for Lovecraft Country. When I am not creating, I am listening to For All Men. My name is Damon Lindelof. I'm one of the writers of Watchmen, The Leftovers, Lost. And when I am not sheltering in place, washing my hands and sheltering from squids, I am listening to For All Nerds. This is Kate Heron. I'm the director of Loki, and you are listening to For All Nerds. And we are back. And thank you, as always, for joining us on the For All Nerds show. And make sure you are following and subscribed on all those various platforms. If you're watching us right now on YouTube or on Twitch, hit that follow. You know, all that good stuff on all the audio platforms from Spotify, iTunes on down. Just make sure you hit that follow. Leave a five-star rating. You know, tell a friend to tell a friend about us. All that good stuff. Because we got a big one in store for you. Hey, yo. X-Men 97. We out here. Returned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel, Ben? I mean, you've seen like really hype, but then also you were confusing a lot of people because I know I was. And you, I, put, I, you put a gif of this man crying. And yeah. if people knew what that gif was really supposed to be for, then they were like, I think they would have known. I think it was happy tears, but yes. People were Vince very crying scared. about the greatness of someone, you know. Right. And I know people were very scared, and I, I get it. And I think that was my intention, you know, because I wanted a little confusion. I wanted to make sure people weren't, you know, knowing exactly how I was feeling. Yeah, I put the smiling emoji with like, like the whole teeth showing, like. Yeah, you, you, you were, <laughs> like, you were much know. more intentional. Yeah, yeah, I was. Um, no, this shit was it's hot fire. Um, my one reservation, because I've been rewatching the whole original X Men. Right before this. And so my reservation came when I first saw the trailers and stuff was the change in animation style. That was my one reservation. And at first I was like, I don't know, because it looked it just looked too clean and too dope, honestly, you know, comparatively to the old shit. Well, compared to the other shit was in like ninety seven. So yeah, it's so, like Yeah, it was like thirty years ago. So <laughs> Yeah, um, so the uh the, the animation um available game. the the available uh techniques and uh yeah. technology was not there. So No. But that yeah. was just my reservation because I was used to the old one, you know, and I saw some other people saying that. Then That's again, once I watched it, that faded away instantly. That reservation was out the window. The, okay. You know, the shit was fucking beautiful. I'm mad they took away Rhodes' thickness. Like, I can't say that. I'm oh quite Oh my disgusted. God, you're one of those guys? I'm one of those guys, dog. Look, Rogue, I got the oh Rogue my is my, God, you know. Ben, I'm disappointed. Look, Rogue <laughs> is one of my favorites, fam. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, it, and it was, okay, the thing is, I always thought that it was just that one shot, you know, the famous shot of her fat ass. That I thought that was, you know, the only one. But no, when you watch the original series, dog, she is super thick in every shot. It's ridiculous. So I do understand the male gaze. that. Yeah, no, but it was like Rogue was thick. Okay, but did that deter your your time? No, um, that was just a quick mention. Okay. I'm just saying, that, you know, Rogue was thick and now she ain't. It's just like how Magneto was old and now he's Zaddy. You know, like they gave enough love he, to Magneto. He looked like the leasing of a hairband. That man looks like, he don't uh, like no what's it, Fabio with, you know, <laughs> Fabio gone gray is what Magneto looked like in this joint. He is pure zaddy. I don't no. know what you're talking about. I the, just, I, I don't, well, I'm not, I wasn't. They stripped that man naked. Zaddy there was me, pure but. S&M in that third episode. There was a lot going on with Magneto. Yes, Man-Nito. there was S&M, but I, I'm not I attracted to I should use you as a toy was the line said, said to this man. And he no, said that. She and said that to him. That too. That's listen, a Zaddy. Listen, listen. Uh, Fine, whatever. I I'm not attracted to the man. So, but what I have, I'm always have been. You always been. And also, Eric. This is a side note. Like it, it was interesting to see this character design of him because we, you know, recently we were at somewhat recently when we were at New York Comic Con, whereas that guy did an amazing cosplay of Magneto with the long hair, and he Mm -hmm. had his hair in the ponytail at first, and he had it down. So it was just a nice precursor to see all that. He was wearing a classic suit though, but. He yeah. had the long hair, the long hair, rock god, Magneto. Yes. Um, so that's how you felt about it. Um, when I first got into it, I was just like, what the fuck is it? Like, it just felt, and and I was, because I did not go back and watch the old mm-hmm. episodes, right? I just went straight off of memory and vibes. So. Your memories and vibes are probably lying to you. I will say that too. Th- 
I think actually what it is, remember, I'm very, very young watching mm-hmm. this stuff, like too young to probably be yeah. watching and understanding half the stuff. And when I was talking to you, like when maybe weeks back, months back, when I was talking to you about how I loved all this and the melodramatics and da 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 da, mm-hmm. and, and it's a story for kids, you know, your stories. And you were, and you were actually using the word melodramatic. You were like, yo, that shit's wild melodramatic. You didn't realize how extra it was. And apparently I didn't. I just, I just remember <laughs> loving it because when this shit came, and let me tell y'all, X Men '97 is true to form when it comes to oh my god that that tone. The tonality is spot on. But when I when it opened, I said this shit is weird and weak. I was like, what? It felt wow. corny. Oh but wow! I said, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This was the original show, and that's what yes. I mean. Well, and I guess that's where you're right. Where I says my memories and vibes were lying to me because lying. I don't remember it being like that. <laughs> It's but exactly it 100% like that. Hundred percent was because then when I saw some older clips from the original series, I was just like, "Oh yeah, they did say that, right?" <laughs> so, so I, so after that shock, <laughs> like I said, and again, this is this is kid me versus adult me just mm-hmm. coming to terms with each other. And after that initial shock wore off, and I said, Tatiana, put yourself now in the visage of this is in the this is from a '90s tone and perspective. This is this version of them. This is not is written purposefully to emulate a lot of that feeling and approach. And once I linked that in my head, I said, okay, bet. From that point on, I had a great time. And again, this 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 diatribe and this this struggle I have with myself happened in in the first episode. Like yeah. the first maybe 10, 15 minutes, I was like, what the fuck's going on? And then I said, oh. <laughs> yeah. I said, oh, kid Tati, calm down. Not kid Tati, but adult Tati, calm down. This is this is what kid Tati couldn't translate back in the day. And this is this is what it really was. And the other thing about it is, like, having just rewatched the whole joint, you know, for the majority, I I did not finish the last season, but then I did watch the very last episode just so I could see how it ended and see where this was coming from. First of all, for everybody who hasn't known or hasn't watched a YouTube video catching you up, X-Men 97 pretty much takes place, like, the day after the last episode ends, maybe a few days, weeks later. The it's, day after tomorrow. Yeah, it's very short. And the, in the end of the last uh, season, Professor X does get shot. As we see in the beginning of this, Ricky. and he's yeah he's cookies right now, and um, I don't want to spoil you know exactly what happened to Professor X, but to the public and the world at large, he's dead. So it's pretty much continuing, From and like you on. said, the tone is straight it's- up. Purely, rib- I feel like they even turned it up a little. They well, no, I can't say turn that. It up. No, 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 that's that's untrue because, like I told you, Tatiana, when I was rewatching this shit, I was like, "Yo, this shit is outgageous." Uh, well, like, like I said, no, they, the way I this nigga realize, Wolverine was crying over Gene. Gene, I need you to. <laughs> it was so I didn't ridiculous. Care. I didn't, it didn't read as outrageous, but yes, you're right. It's, it, it's, it's yeah. absolutely outrageous. They did not turn it up. It, they might have you- toned it down. And I say this to people listening, as long as you go in with that understanding, yo, they are writing this and approaching it as the 90s version, then it's going to make sense. If you come there thinking on some 2000s and later shit, you got the wrong idea. And I think, and I'm saying people, and I can see that because people think 97, they think today's level or style of writing I don't, with, uh... with new, and with, with animation, with, with, with the old characters. I'm like, that's not what it is. I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to say that I disagree, but I don't think that it's, I, okay, I think, hmm, let me see how I put this, right? Okay, I don't, I, I don't want to say that it's, that this isn't modern style of writing. I think it's very modern style of writing. I think that what people are forgetting, that's what I'm saying. I don't think people, once again, I think people's memories of the old show are just different than what it was because the old show is very modern. It was one of the first shows that had, a continuing story arc, at least in animation, you know, where it was like things happen, like Professor X and Magneto spent a whole season in the Savage Land, and every episode would just have a bit of their story continuity. while the main story is happening. Yeah, continuity. So continuity. And yeah. it ended, like I said, and the continuity continued into this. But the melodramaticness of it is just like that's kind of baked into the X Men. You know, the X Men are very melodramatic from the comics. They're very wordy. They're very much, you know, people who always talk about their feelings and they're always stressed about being mutants. That's mm-hmm. just part of their mm-hmm. shit. So, and okay. I think the way these stories are told is very well done, like in a modern fashion. It is well so that's done. Why, that's why I don't want to like. I'm gonna yeah. okay. So I'm gonna rephrase a little bit. Maybe yeah. not modern. It's not written from a con- 
it has contemporary influence, but it's yeah. more more one hundred. It's more deeply informed by the tone of the 90s show it's more much to me it's much more deeply informed by that yes it has the trappings of we're in 2024 so the Mm -hmm. people are going to be the people who are writing are informed by their experiences in 2024 yes so clearly there's an update there so maybe modern is not the word but it's not a contemporary feeling it's not something that's based that was written that something is based in this time it's very firmly 90s yes so yes. I just want to make that, but but that being said, now that we agree, I just want to make that distinction to people because I can see people because like, like I did going to this the wrong way and and no, thinking no. it's something else. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and I think the thing is, I think what's a, that's going back to that your memories are lying to you. I think a lot of people are going to come into this and think it's something that it isn't because their memories mm-hmm. told them that this X Men show in the back in the day was the greatest written thing ever. When that's what I thought, and then I was like, wasn't. what the fuck are they saying? Like, it never was. And, and that's why I got like f- f- again. It was a hot second when it, when this <laughs> episode started. But I was like, "Yo, what the fuck is going on? What are they talking about? And why are they talking like that?" But then I was like, "Oh, wait, wait, wait." <laughs> no, it was I, one. It was always ridiculously overly me- melodramatic. But it was just like any show. There were some good episodes and there were some bad ones. Yeah. And there was a lot of bad ones, honestly. And then there was a lot of good ones. And like when they were on like a particular story arc, they did great translations. I thought that was another thing that carried over to this. Because they translated very quickly uh, a lot of Inferno, the trial of Magneto. Yeah, it's the trial of Magneto is pretty much the first episode. Inferno, not Inferno really, but parts of Inferno Magneto take place in the episode third episode. Two. Okay, yeah. The, the first episode is more just the intro. That's yeah, intro. just the intro and catch you up to everything. And then mm-hmm. the second is the trial of Magneto, and the third is. A bit of Inferno, but just a lot of history of Jean Grey and Madeline Pryor compressed very well, mm-hmm. I thought. Fucking excellently yeah. the way and, they handled and, that. And I will say that the this is actually really well done. Like once, yeah. like I said, once you realize what's going on, mm-hmm. it's actually compelling and the show got better to me. Yes. Like it, you know, typically you want the pilot episode to be the strongest, but it wasn't. Not for me anyway. No, nah, well, I wouldn't say that either. The strongest to me was two and three, right? So, yeah. and that I guess that's, that's that's a good thing because then that get that draws you deeper into the story. And then I was like, okay, this is more along the lines of what my memory was saying was, yo, it's still great stories. It's still giving me mm-hmm. soaps. It's still giving giving drama, and I fuck with that. And and again, we're, we'll stick with episode one right now, but like that look and feel from the original series. Like, did you feel like they? did a great job paying homage. Do you think that, and there are updates there as well and, and new things that they approached. How do you feel about that? I think it's great. Like I said, my, that was one of my big reservations was the style of animation that they chose for it. But then just starting with, we're, you know, we'll do this episode by episode and starting with episode one. First, there's the Marvel animation slate where they show, you know, it's like the old, you know, the Marvel red, but now it says Marvel animation. And in the background, there's animation from Amazing Sp- uh, Spider-Man and his amazing friends on down the line. I think even earlier than that to all the way up to their latest what if stuff. So it was, you know, dope little intro. And then the music hit in. And as soon as the music hit in, you know, it's that Pavlov dog. Yeah, the dog response. I'm like, yay! And <laughs> um, then they have the opening, you know, Storm and Rogue flying outside of the Blackbird. Flying out the Blackbird, yeah. And then and the then, X-Men logo flipping. Them yeah, around, yeah, and I'm like, oh, okay, they kept the intro. They kept the music right. But then I'm noticing the change in animation. I see Storm got right the away. mohawk as she's flying around. <laughs> yeah. And then they do the little intro shots. And I'm like, oh, this is dope. Because I'm feeling the same. It. Yeah, mostly. but they're just updated animation. It's all the right. same moves and everything. It's just but cleaner. Just, yeah, just cleaner. And it's all dope. And then Bishop's added in the beginning. And Morph is added in the beginning. Right. So I'm like, okay, that's dope. So dope. And then, so right away, I'm pretty much feeling it. And then the Friends of Humanity showing up. And I've been. If you watch the first one, they are. I didn't realize how heavy they were because I heavy kinda, like heavy. When you said heavy. Oh, they were heavy. heavy in the first series. Oh, how like, deep they were! Yeah, because like, yeah, yeah. when they showed up in the comics, was kind of the time I stopped reading comics for, especially Edge Men for a second. So I didn't give a shit about them. Honestly, I always thought the Friends of Humanity because there's always some niggas who hate mutants, and I just thought the Friends of Humanity was a corny name. 
And it's even more hilarious now because now it just looks like fuck, fuck out of here. here. And it's just like they're just running around saying fuck out of here to everyone. Yeah. And it's even funnier because like they are saying fuck out of here to the mutants. They are. So it like fits, fits perfectly. But I just never gave a shit about them. I never gave a shit about Graydon Creed, who is Sabretooth's son and the leader of them. I just never gave well, a shit about any of that. Fuck out of here is, is still whack. They're still yeah, whack. Yeah, they're, they're still this, whack. In this 97 series, they're still whack. They got the whole Mega Man guns on their arm. It, it just, shit was corny. <laughs> but I was super happy to see Roberto da Costa. Not Sounds as brown fun. I would like him to be, but, you know, the accent was heavy. You know, the brown skin, the curly hair was there. And he's not the super confident Roberto da Costa of later years. He is still super young, super green. But still had the flyness. He had the confidence. Yeah, he, just, he let you know, let Shorty know I'm rich, single, you know, all that. And I got fly. the jet. <laughs> yeah, I got the jet. You know, I can let you fly it sometime. Got the PJ, yeah. Yeah, so I, I was, I mean, Roberto is beautiful. And that was great to see because he's one of my favorite characters. Got him on the shelf over here. He shines in X-Men Red, if you haven't read that. But yeah, I've been a Roberto fan since New Mutants, Fallen Angels. You know, we can go back. Like, that's my dog. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, and then the costuming is a little bit different too. Um, mm-hmm. some uh, for for some or most, the costuming is a little bit different. Um, yeah, slight th- updates. Th- th- there there's slight updates there, and um, like you mentioned, like the biggest one for me was obviously Storm and the fact that she doesn't have that full mane of hair anymore. She still got the long shit going on, but mm-hmm. she got the mohawk. The I actually have a storm behind me right now, but the mohawk storm, which which I know a lot of people thought was cool. You know, my my memories, of course, were like, you know, the main. So I was just like, all right, this is this is different. No, Mo- you know, Mo- Storm is, is the god, fam. I'm sure. And, and it's and I mean that that should have big a been hint. I mean, that should have been a big hint. I also should have got another big hint from the episode titles, which were already released. Mm-hmm. And two of them involve life death. And that should have been a big hint to what happens in episode two, but we'll get into that. But it wasn't enough for me. And all the goddamn foreshadowing w- was also quite hilarious it to was me. So much foreshadowing. I mean, and and I actually didn't realize, or maybe I forgot, like, shout out to Steph I Will, who, like, one of the reasons why, like, she was able to help build her platform was, like, the jokes when mm-hmm. it comes to X-Men and how ridiculous. And, and as you say, outrageous their shit was. And really yes. the shit that they have been saying all along. They, and again, maybe they didn't turn it up, but it feels amplified here now. Maybe because the animation is so clean, so I'm not looking, I'm not distracted Mm -hmm. by bad animation. It's just like, yo, what is these niggas actually saying? And it's just, the... the the, the comments that these characters be making. Can we talk about... Morph. I mean, Morph, we're going to we're gonna have a lot to say about Morph in a second. We're going to have a lot to say about... And, 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 and we should also get into it, because like, again, we're talking about episode one. Yep. Which is called, to, uh, the title, To Me, My X-Men. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I also wanted to make sure we, we touch upon before we go into details are, is the voice acting. So yep. I did look it up just to double check. Most of the voice actors from the original series has returned. Mm-hmm. Um with the exception of a couple. Is it still Cyclops? Or people are acting like he had a new voice. He, I thought he had a new voice because he sounded different. But apparently it's the same guy. And I was memories. shocked. I'm telling you, no, it's memories. No, it's not memories. I, listen, <laughs> memory, I can understand a, a, a broken memory about, you know, exactly how good something was. Or or, or was it really or that outrageous ridiculous. or something? Yes. But two, I feel like certain things in the human thing, voice and scent. And yeah. there's like one other that. Does not change. Well, he and probably was, changed. It's been twenty years. The guy, his voice has changed. Is what yeah. has changed. It's a little different than what it mm-hmm. was, and perhaps that's a that could be again because he's older. He's his voice literally his vocals may have changed, or yep. he changed the inflection for this show. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But it's the same guy. However, I do hear a difference. I, do I hear like a difference. it. I I mean I don't like I said even having just rewatched it, the only voice who. Is like so identifiable for me is Rogue because I'm like that's the same yeah, Rogue, woman. That's there Rogue. ain't no goddamn way. That that's because because yeah. she she has very very specific uh intonation and, yeah. and how she does that accent and it's yeah. like unmistakable. There yeah. was some words she said that I was like questioning it a little bit, but again always... I confirm confirmed it is still her. Yeah. Um and uh, I just wanted to, like, I'm trying to say the names, too, but there's so many damn names. Don't um, even do it. Come on, original, man. People can Google. The original voice of uh, Storm <laughs> is still there. Yeah. We'll um, be here all day. Yeah. 
I you were talking about it how you when you were talking about outrageous how <laughs> how extra I love it. it as soon as she said it to the winds of the east and Death. to the west I was like yes this is what Death. I remember she said reclaim these people or something when she told Re- the desert to, yo okay that's, yeah. that's episode like two or three so we can't no that's still yet. one when she came that's, no that's when she went hard on the sentinels and still one was that's that what she yes damn well, I have yeah got my notes right here no that's no one a lot that's still one. Been. But yeah. yeah, but but that was one of the most badass things. But anyway, uh, no, yeah. um, we were talking about foreshadowing, and and one of the biggest and most ridiculous ones to me was in one when Storm is sitting with Jean and is over there wondering what it was like. She's like, I once thought about it, like, what would it not to have powers? <laughs> right? But then it's I was like, that. I but love my family over here so much. It's just like oh, heavy-handed yeah. foreshadowing, heavy-handed. outrageous lines. But it's entertaining, and that's why I keep saying it's mm-hmm. like your stories for kids or now for adults, right? It's it's the stories. Like, it just be some crazy as the world turn type shit. Like, yo, why is this happening? But they're all animated, right? Um, but yeah, everyone generally sounded great. Um, I know also people were kind of talking about Wolverine a little bit, but it's the same guy. Um, oh, yeah. I know. That was another one. I knew that was him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chris, you know, I love... Gambit, Gambit. Now, if you want to talk about a zaddy, we can talk about Gambit. That's my oh, nigga. God. Okay, so man, I've that's, never. That's my nigga. I, I like. I was such a road fanatic, and when he showed up, and it was like, it jealous. was like when they. No, it was. It wasn't that it was jealousy because it was like it was corny. Like, are right, you got oh, remember? They put the two southerners together. The two people from Louisiana together, <laughs> nigga. Like it's like when they put Storm and Black Panther together. It was like Bless. nigga. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. blacks to get together, and now here's y'all. Lo- well, you and- know, lack of imagination, but you see what they did in this series, right? And the rogue. And there's also the thing about Gambit, like, um, this is a bigger story, but I, I guess I could just explain it. And um, remember, it- we got it. I want to make sure we talk about. No, well, I'll say that for the third. Okay. But no, I'll, I'll just explain it now because it, it, it makes more sense to explain it now, right? Okay. Okay. Gambit blows up, and Gambit is actually created by uh, Chris Claremont in the 1990s. And the 1990s, the comic books were the time of super extreme. Everybody's extreme. As I have pointed out on Twitter, there was a character named Longshot who had a one glowing eye. He wore a lot of pouches. He had a mullet. And he was, art was done by this creator, Art Adams, who became super influential. And mad characters copied that, such as Cable with the glowing eye. Mad pouches, such as Gambit with the glowing eye. Mad pouches, right? And so when Gambit shows up, Gambit is like the epitome of extreme 90s shit. My man got the trench coat. He got the weird eyes. Plus, he got the glowing eyes. Even in this show, Plus he, got he's the a cut, thief. he got the cut-off crop top and everything going yeah, on. Yeah, you know, he got the cut-off crop top. He got the hair. Mm-hmm. He got all the extremes. He got the five o'clock shadow. It's like all the things that all the 90s characters had. Gambit showed up with everything. He's a thief. <laughs> he's a rogue. Fuck all the him. women love Fuck him. Fuck with him. You know, he's an anti-hero type character. So he was all the things that, uh, you know, 90s characters embody, right? Then at the same time, there's this X-Men villain who we see in the series and in the original called Mr. Sinister. And Mr. Sinister is this super extreme villain, right? Like as they said on here, he's so evil that his name is Sinister. Sinister. It's just ridiculous. Sunday, you know, he's Sunday, all Sunday. white. He looks like a vampire. Mm-hmm. He's got the black armor. He's just like the evil of evil. Right? So Chris Claremont in- introduced both of these characters around the same time. Gambit shows up. Mr. Sinister shows up. Now, Chris Claremont's original intention for these characters is hilarious. Because Chris Claremont gets fired off X-Men a couple years later and doesn't actually get to introduce what his real story was. But the real original story for Gambit, and probably why I brought early that I didn't fuck with this dude, was that both him, Gambit, and Mr. Sinister are supposed to be mental creations. It's supposed to be a young 12-year-old mutant who envisions these things as, okay, this is what like, a this hero is a cool should be. cool version of me. Yep. Yeah. And this is what a villain should be. On some so, Shazam shit. On some Shazam shit. And so he created them both and sent them out into the world. And Gambit joined the X-Men. And Mr. Sinister becomes the villain. And it was eventually going to be revealed for that. But it never happened. And so this super you know, ridiculous character, Gambit, because he became super popular instantly. I love him. And that's the thing. People didn't get the death. joke. It's just like another character like Lobo. Lobo was supposed to be a joke about Wolverine and all these characters. And nobody got the joke. They were just like, oh, Lobo's cool. Yeah. Gambit's cool. So they didn't get it. And people 
you know, clamped onto them. And now Gambit's official character with 30 plus years and him and Rogue are, you know, official couple. And it is what it is. But the original intention for them both was really interesting and really hilarious to me. So, hmm. That's yep. interesting. A little bit um, of X Men Bat now, and that's a, that's okay that that we all missed the joke apparently, and that's fine by me. It worked because out because, like, like I said, as much as I didn't like Gambit, then he's had some great stories and great adventures. Man, he had this one issue where he pulls a knife out of his thigh, and then like somebody shot him with a knife, and then he like pulled the knife out with his teeth and used that knife to pick a lock. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I became a Gambit fan. <laughs> <laughs> like. I have said it earlier, but I want to really impress upon people how fucking hilarious this series is because there are, like I said, not only the dialogue, but there is just some choices that are like clearly made to be funny. And when I say to be funny, I mean where they're like, in today's, it's shit that happens to the characters that in today's stories, again, more contemporary stories of, of the now, you would be like, that's a plot hole. Or why would they do that? Or, okay, I gotta know what you're, where you're saying this because I'm not. I really don't. I'm feeling that. Yeah, I need to hear. First episode when you get introduced to these niggas and they fighting the niggas in the beginning. Or uh, uh, fuck out of here. They fighting fuck out of here in the beginning. Mm-hmm. In the little warehouse, Storm and Bishop come down and rain holy hell on these niggas. Right. Yep. And. I'm like, well, first of all, you should have been dead immediately, right? This is Storm you're talking about. She's coming down on the lightning immediately. Like, ain't no okay. build up. She, well, she says, um, you yeah. know, she says her, she says her, you know, cannons to the east and then cannons to the right of them and then comes down with the lightning, right? But they kind of making it. They kind of making it alive, right? The, the fuck out of here is kind of like- Storm has still making great life. control. They're kind of making it alive, which I'm just like, that's not supposed to happen. Then at one point, one of the fuck out of here people shoots this computer that is right next to Storm and Bishop. And both Storm and Bishop get taken out, like knocked the fuck out. And literally like, like start pass out on the floor. Both of them together. Then down come repelling like the fucking SWAT team come Scott fucking Summers to come save the day. Like saying some cool kid, like, you know, Bart Simpson shit. And that's why I'm just like, this shit is hilarious because they... they there ain't no goddamn way that this shit would fly. Like, if they were being for real. And that's why I'm like, it's also an element of camp in this and why I think it's funny. There is an intended camp in how they're doing the dialogue and the approach. There's no fucking way that you would be dead ass serious doing this now. No fucking way. Not I, no. I, I don't know. Like, to me, it just reads Storm? like. Storm? I, I, okay, I'm not. All right, first of all, I'm not understanding. Did you want her to lightning these niggas to death? No, not necessarily. I'm just saying, I just find it funny that out of anything that could have. An explosion gave them the L, takes her ass out. A, a little ass fucking explosion that, that some fuck out of here people started. It wasn't like they were shooting with the Mega Man guns, dog. They had the Mega Man guns doing oh him. Oh my like, God. No. No, that shit was funny. That's the first thing I said. I said, how did they get taken out by that? And it was both of them. I'm just like, damn. I mean, Storm is not, you know, like powerful. She's not invulnerable, but yeah, my but God. Yeah. None of them are, but my God. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It was I, funny. I, I feel you. I feel you, Riggs, but I don't. You know, it's like, it's. That's fine. Yeah, I, it, I, yeah. I was just like, ain't no way. Because any, because then when you look at later episodes, that stupid shit don't fucking affect her. And I'm just like, that is classic. That's classic camp for me. Like, it's like later on, like choosing, picking and choosing what stupid shit decides to affect the character. That shit really shouldn't be affecting them at all. Not like that. That's pretty much like every Marvel film. Like, people complain well, about that all the time. Like, you know, it's like their power levels well, that's de- power change level. depending well, that's, on. Yeah, that's power level. But po- okay. That's power levels. They're power- like, Storm later survives a battle with the Sentinels with no problem. So I get it, you know. <laughs> Like in the same it's episode. So maybe, like you said, maybe that is just classic Marvel. But yeah, Jesus that is Christ, just Marvel. It's, it's comics, but it's, you know, that's what I mean. It's like, it is what it is. Some days Spider Man can survive a fight with Fire Lord, and some days Spider Man has trouble with thugs on the street. You know, it just is what it is. Doesn't you know, make that's it how... less funny. No, but that's it like, to me, I, I guess because I'm so deep in comic books, it's just like, yep, yeah, you know, that's how it is. You know, like, explosion, they get knocked like, out, and then later on, she fucks up some Sentinels, you know? I was just like, what? So, yeah. it, it was it was, it was, was just funny. Um, I wanted to give a big shout out to yeah. that entrance, though, and Cyclops shot, sliding around, of uh, being, like, using his uh, optic blast as projectile beams and moving himself with it. Yeah. I, I've read a lot of Kinetic. X-Men comments. I don't know if I've seen him do that. And I that mean, was fly. 
I don't recall him being able to do it, but he can. Like, no, he can. It's been done before in stories. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I've can, just never in seen him do about, that. Like power beans. I'm like, all right, it's plausible. Yeah, it's definitely plausible. I mean, I've seen it done in other stories. I've never seen Strat do it. Right. I've never seen him drop down and, you know, fly basically <laughs> land. Down from a thousand from three thousand feet in the air or, or so that. lit. Um, so lit. Um I this this show reminded me one thing that my memory did not fail me on how much I fucking can't stand Scott Summers and how wow, he's the fucking hate, simp. The hate yeah, is he did so, some cool shit with his with his powers and stuff like that. He did all but kind of cool as shit. As a guy, wow, that's always up in his fucking emotions and Jane and nah, I never liked this nigga. So, no, that stands firm for me. If you didn't like this nigga before, you damn sure ain't liking this nigga. Now. And when I mean by that is. Just him as his person. Is he a cool character in the show? Yeah. But yes. as a person, he he annoys me. He he fucking annoys me. And Man. it's still there. Y'all did right. <laughs> Disagree. Disagree. 100%. Scott Summers oh, fan he, club he, he right here. Me off. All day. Scott Summers all day. He, ugh, ugh. All day. Ugh. The nigga. Okay. We'll talk about it in the other episode. But the nigga like could. Yeah, hey. Well, hey. Say that. Cause, yeah, and no. Di- no. Yeah. Cause no. Tell- Okay. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey. All right. Um, one other thing I want to point out in this episode was I just love the but Sentinels. What, what exactly happened this episode? Like, we did the intro where we got reacquainted I with I mean, the people team. seen the shit. We don't need to tell them exactly what happened. No, like, but I, I'm, I'm for us, so I can understand because especially they, they, earlier they you had the, said something happened. I didn't realize it all happened in the first episode. And yeah, they, they not, fought the um, Sentinels. So I wish you would just listen to me when I say do it because... <laughs> I was getting to the point about yep. the pacing and the storytelling that it makes that they were able to put so much story. Mm-hmm. You mentioned it before when you said the specific uh, storylines, but the fact that as you're watching, as I mentioned, it does get, it, it starts getting better and it increasingly gets more involved. So I think they did a fantastic job because pacing is also a big thing. Mm-hmm. And you never technically want to like be in lulls and things like that. And I feel like they they did very well there. That's why I think. I like I get what you're saying. Like the second or third episodes might have been, but I thought the pilot was very strong for a pilot because I think it had a lot to do and handled it all very well. Like it catches you up on a whole ass series that happened before this that most people probably have not seen, or if they have, they haven't seen it since they were kids. You know, and it gets you right back into it. It reintroduces pretty much the whole team of mutants, and it does it through Sunspot's eyes, which is a really smart way of doing it. So through each way, you get to meet all these characters through his eyes. So it's fresh eyes. You know, it's a great storytelling way. Because he wasn't what? there in episode one. No, Sunspot's in episode one. Sunspot's Did they in... catch find him in episode one? Yes, There's dog. so much that have. And this is why you listened <laughs> to the beginning and just said what I asked you, which was what happened in episode one. Okay. Well, then, all right. <laughs> Short story for, you know, because... Tatiana and I did watch all these three, you know, back to back. back. It's, so, you know, it felt like one up. mini movie for me. All right, to clear it up. Yeah, to clear it up. In episode one, the Ed Smith rescue um, Sunspot from the Friends of Humanity. They take him back to the mansion where he meets everyone. He's immediately like, I ain't fucking with this. The nigga don't want to be there. And runs off to a nightclub. The Ed Smith <laughs> follow him to a nightclub. Hilarious. Like, come on. Hilarious. Which was, uh, but see, this is all, once again, these are all like, uh, references because this happened before with Dazzler, so they basically mm. switched Dazzler for Sunspot. Mm. So the Edsmen follow him to the nightclub, where upon um, the Friends of Humanity show up again. There's more beef, you know. Boom, boom, boom. Eventually, uh, they you say, "Okay, we got to track down the maker." You know, we need to track down where the they get master- these weapons from. Yeah, where they get these only ways from. if if y'all got access to Sentinel because these are Sentinel based weapons. Yep. So what's going it- on? Is if there's a master mold, which is the right. thing that mates Sentinels. Which they so had they, supposedly destroyed. Yep. So they had destroyed okay. one before. But your man Bolivar Trash shows up. Bolivar Trash is from the comments. The Trash family are basically responsible for creating the Sentinels. If you read House of X, Powers of X, in one of Moria's lives, Moria McTaggart's lives, she basically went through and killed all of the Trash trying to stop the Sentinels from happening. It doesn't. You know, help doesn't work, but <laughs> because Sentinels and AI is she going tried. to come, even if you kill, it's like if you kill yeah. Bill Gates, AI is still going to come up. Like you know, I, I do want to say that fight was one of the coldest Ooh. fights just in animation in this animation because wow. if one thing is so strong about this series is when they animate the fights, all yes. of the action fight scenes are incredible, especially. 
especially when they in the desert, when the way storm came down mm -hmm. and turned the fucking sand into glass. Mm -hmm. My nigga. And yeah. went in, like you said, and carried East Sentinel like it was nothing. Like that, that mwah, chef's kiss, beautiful. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that whole, even leading up to it, like the X-Men when the Blackbird gets torn apart and Storm the just, fallen, yeah. yeah, and Storm just nods her head to Rogue and then they all just snap into action it's and like, then Cyclops is like, okay, team, great work. You know, I'll see you on the ground. Like that whole shit was pure fire. It's like very, it's very the camera superhero. whipping around them. It was just great animation. Yeah. Oh, uh, like you said, when Storm does take out the Sentinels, they call her an Omega level mutant. Yep, I heard that part. I said, like, "Here we go." They bring here we the, go the new school in. <laughs> yep, which is and the funny, the Omega level stuff came around like it was first introduced as a concept right around the nineties, but it mm -hmm. really became prominent recently and in the two thousands when they were saying shit yeah. in the in the X in the Fox versions. Yep, and so the Omega, the idea of an Omega level mutant is basically. If you're a mutant, there is no limit. Like, it's Mean Girls. Like, there is no limit. Because, like, Storm <laughs> controls weather. Right. So there's no limit there's no. to the weather she can control. Right. Like, Cyclops, as powerful he is, is not an Omega-level mutant because his eye beams have a limit. You Good. know, they, they can reach certain limit, and that's it. That's, he that's reaches a threshold. Yeah. There's, there's no... Unless there's no atmosphere, and even then, I don't even think that that's... No, that Storm's stop been her. shown to control, I think sto like, galactic say, storms. That's what I'm saying. I said, I don't even think the atmosphere even matters. Nope. Like, sh any form of weather. Yes, she can control. A Magneto is the master of magnetism. There is no there's one no more powerful to that. than him at magnetism. He is an Omega-level mutant. What about Professor X? And Well, Jean Grey. I'm not sure which of them is right point, now considered right the Omega version of... I think Professor X is definitely considered an Omega level telepath. Yeah. And I think Jean has the potential as a like Phoenix, eventually, because she doesn't she's beyond. not there yet. No, she's not there yet. But I think she has the potential to definitely become one of the Omegas. And there's a few other, like Iceman, surprisingly, like is an Omega. The supreme. She's the uh, Supreme. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, Iceman surprisingly yeah, Ice is Man. Omega level. He he is he's considered yeah. Omega. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because I like when Iceman goes ham, he goes ham, but He's that's always some ice age shit. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, he's always been a person who holds back. And that's why they don't you don't ever get to see his real power. But Okay. Yeah, okay. that was a great reference. Another one I really wanted to uh talk about real quick in this episode was a great Kirkoa um House of Vets reference was when Guy Rick is in jail talking to them and he says, Did you honestly think we would roll over that we wouldn't fight back? And that's a flip of what the mutants told the humans at the beginning of House of X. It's actually what Cyclops tells. I think he tells Reed Richards that after mm. they established Perkoa. He's like, did you honestly think we would just sit here and take it all this time? Mm. That we wouldn't fight back. And so it's a flip right there. And he's even says other things that, you know, it's a direct thing to Perkoa where he's talking about if we accept you, eventually you're going to replace us. And that's, I mean, right, that's, real that, world, yep. that's real world racism. It's, you know, what the X-Men finally take into account of Krakoa. And it's it's really interesting to me as a huge fan of the X-Men and mutants in general. It's something that came up a lot when people were mad about Krakoa because they're like, why are the X-Men, you know, doing this? Why are they having their own nation? Why don't they, you know, why don't they just take it, basically? And as a black man who's dealt with racism my whole life, it's all, that was like, yes. Fight I would back, love it. Nigga, fight yeah, back. fight back, nigga. And I would love it if we had our own place. And we were just like, nah, we're gonna establish our own shit and we're gonna do our own thing. Mm -hmm. So that was just really interesting. And it was really interesting to me to see that pushback. And going back to this, and we we're talking about the costuming and everything else. And right now, recently, Marvel just announced what they're doing with the X-Men after Krakoa. And it's basically going back to this. Like you're gonna see Cyclops in this type outfit, you're gonna see. They have one book that's basically the main team, you know, Rogue, Gambit, Storm, like all the X-Men that we mm -hmm. see in X-Men 97. So really, I'm seeing the corporate side of Marvel coming back into play right now with the X-Men. And I really, this is my big prediction that when we see them in the MCU, these are the looks you're going to see. Them. They're going to have the classic looks? Sci the, well, see, classic Close, is... Closer to classic. No, but uh, what I'm saying is classic is also um, depends on who you are, right? Depends on your age. Like to some people, like to me, this is my classic X Men. Like this is I, 
I came up before this, but this was that, you know, this is like my era of X Men. I like gotta the 90s say, was that, you know, my I gotta shit. say, even as somebody younger than you, like, this yeah. is considered classic for me. Like, yeah, and I, that's. There's, because beyond this, all you have is X Men version. And then even more recently, you have Krakoa stuff. So I. Well, no, this yeah, is classic. There's, there's so many, like, Cyclops is like 50 costumes. You're mostly yeah, but, but this is the one. The, well, see, I think for most people, this one, and this is the one that Marvel pushed a lot. I mean, it's also, it has a lot to do with, like, the people who did it. Like, Jim Lee is one of the greatest art, art of all time, and he's the biggest 90s artist, and he's the one who designed most of these looks. Yeah. So and, it just holds, you know, it stays and, the test yeah, of time. Yeah, it, it does. And then you also have to remember, like, also my gen, on, like, mm-hmm. playing Capcom, Marvel vs. Capcom. Oh, me like, too, come that, on. These, these fucking yeah. costumes was it. So, yeah, so, so, there, so I think for a lot of people, this is considered the classic like, look. Yeah, yeah, so I feel like this is the look that we will see in the movies. I'm not mad at that. There's other stuff I'd like to see. Like I always talk about Kakoa. There's all these areas, you know, but I get it. You know, mm-hmm. from a corporate standpoint, from someone looking to establish a brand, this is the looks that they should go for. Right. So. Before we get out of episode one, one of the things I want to make sure we mention, because we talked about it uh, before we started recording, was the the dual powers. So, like, oh, for the, example. The mutant circuit. Yeah, the mutant circuit. Right. So, in that same fight with Trask and the Ooh. Sentinels and Massimo, where, again, where... My man Gambit, when he charged up Wolverine's claws, that shit was fire. And then, like, and then go ahead, you can say about the next one. Yeah, and he also throws a card underneath Wolverine's ass to launch him into the air so that he can (laughs) then tell Morph, give me some bounce, and Morph transforms into the mutant character, the Blob. The Blob. So Wolverine can then bounce off his stomach and deliver the coup de grace to Master Mold and cut that nigga's head clean off. Yeah. With his charge of claws. I said the fights, the fights went and go too damn hard on this show. So Yeah. And the, the idea of a mutant circuit is something that has been part of X-Men forever, but was recently defined in the Krakoa era as the mutant circuit. And in the Krakoa era, they took it to the extremes where they have this team of the five who can resurrect people by combining their powers. Mm. But they also define the original mutant circuit is known as the fastball special, yep. which most X-Men fans know as mm. Velocis throwing mm. Wolverine at somebody. Mm. So it's something basic like that. It's just combining your powers creates a circuit and, you know, the sum is greater than the parts. Now, I love that Gambit charge up shit because, as we know, Gambit stuff blows up everything. When he charges something, it explodes. Right. But Wolverine's claws are indestructible and adamantium. So it's like, this is the thing that can be charged up and won't explode. And then he can throw the claw. And, I mean, he and, can... the, nigga, and the nigga's invulnerable. You could throw some fucking blow up shit on his ass. Well, he'll right. heal. Wolverine still <laughs> felt that shit, which is a <laughs> fucked up thing. That's, that's, the thing that's, that's what people always forget about Wolverine. And the comments always bring it up is he feels all the pain. He'll be all right. <laughs> that's basically what Gamera was saying. Like, you know, this he'll explosion on your ass. For it. He'll be all right. No, he didn't ask for that part. He told Morph to help him up. I mean, he knew it was going to happen, but still. It was <laughs> he, like, goddamn. He, he, he knew. They practiced this, Ben. Believe me. They in the danger room yeah, coming I know. up with I these fucking it. circuits. They, I get it. He was ready for his ass. But okay? goddamn it. it. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even going back to the fastball special, I always thought it was wild that niggas were just throwing this nigga at people. You know, like, I get he, it. Your bones don't he's break. Like, he's 5'2". It don't he's matter. Small. Niggas, it's like come on, fam. Either. We're not gonna talk about how niggas used to throw, you know, dwarves around like that. Shit's trifling. Like it's it's hella trifling. Like just because he he's small, this nigga Colossus just throws this nigga around. Like they practice this same fucking circuit in the dance room. Again, how do you practice that, nigga? How do you like they throw me at that wall, mean? nigga? <laughs> yeah. First of all, it's, it's not a wall. It's whatever. No, it is, I know. It's a hologram. It's, but, I know. But, but, but you. And you uh, know Wolverine's fucking psycho. You know he I, he loved this shit. He loved every goddamn it. minute I of it. I get it. It's okay? like niggas who play football. I've and, never understood that shit. And you know, to I be never clear, understood it. Yeah. there is no pain like the pain of not being loved by Jean Grey. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to, Jean. <laughs> Let's be oh clear. Oh my okay? God. There is no pain that's worse pain. than that for Wolverine. So he is okay. Of- how many shots this season are they gonna have this nigga standing outside of a oh, door while he getting played? Like crying, and that's what I'm saying. That's I remember that nigga. Cry. Now I don't consider him a simp. See the disrespect I because this nigga is because pure simp. that nigga and because he simps in front of Gene, but then yep. when Gene not there, he got fucking work to do. This nope. nigga Scott nope. is 
No. This nigga was crying in the tree. By himself. He's by himself. <laughs> when company comes or it's time to go get shit done, he ain't talking about, oh, oh, I'm so set and Gina this, this, that, and the third. No, this you nigga You need to rewatch that original series, go. boy. That nigga's... Wolverine is on go all the time and he's about that action all the time. Half the time, Scott crying like, I don't know, we should be doing this and that. Nigga, get the fuck out no, of here. Man, get no, man, no. Get right, your right, head in the game. All right, all right, we gonna move on to episode two because- Get your the, head in the game. The, the, the why, because I know why you trying to disrespect this nigga. This nigga had Sophie's choice. I'm not trying choice. to him. I am, actively. <laughs> no. This nigga has so much choice, and you over here just threatening this nigga. Once again, that doesn't take away his power. It doesn't take away that this shit, this nigga, it does do dope shit. Yeah, he's super dope. He's but no. still a fucking simp. Uh-uh. No. Yeah. All right. All right. Episode two. Episode two of X-Men 97. Once Mutant again. Mutant liberation begins. I got a shout out because I was completely surprised and taken aback by this, that the fact that the opening credits seem to be changing Every episode. Well, it's not dynamic. seem to be. I love it. Yes, I love it. Because we always have the opening shots of each hero, the hero shot of each one mm-hmm. with their name. And this one starts mm-hmm. off immediately, let you know that shit has changed. <laughs> Magneto with- is now part of the team. Because we didn't mention that at the end of the first yeah. episode. Magneto with the good hair shows up. Maggie mm-hmm. with the good hair shows up. And it's like, ha, ha, ha. Professor right. has left like, with all the mean niggas. Really- and, and also, to that point, like, in episode one, because since he's allegedly dead, you don't see Professor X, because he's in the original intro, Professor X. And yes. he wasn't in this whatsoever. No, whatsoever. Um, but yes, the second episode, you got Magneto coming in like, I got this shit. He bought NBC. You know he in this bitch. <laughs> the niggas got his new costume on. In the intro, he makes an X out of some metal. costume. Yeah. With the it, M and the arms out. Yeah, with the, the, the M and the legs. arms out. I told you, look, I, you may deny it, but man is pure Zaddy. And that's, uh, I think I also fuck with him because he's the one who bad rogue. And unlike Gambit, he deserved it. So that's why I always fucked with Magneto. Word up. Hmm. And also that whole thing, like, because you get to see that, like, I didn't remember any of that. I was like, oh, they was fucking. Like, literally, oh. as soon as they linked up, I was like, oh. Okay, now that, now let, we'll, we'll get into that, right? But that, okay, so that we name, you know, Mutant Liberation begins. Um, this is actually the episode where Storm is having a conversation with Gene because this episode is about Gene and Cyclops really thinking, okay, we're about to have this kid. Another we need funny. to get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like, it's, we've been here too long. We old as dirt. And this is, once again, a, happened exactly like this in the comics. In the comics, oh god, no, we're again. No, I'll get into that in the third episode because that's a whole nother uh original intention for characters that didn't work out. <laughs> you like the well actually these niggas, okay. No, it's it's <laughs> it's so it's so interesting to me because Chris Claremont is one of these writers who plots ahead for years in advance. So he had all these plans for these characters. And they told us nigga no. <laughs> and niggas just said, fuck your plans, nigga. <laughs> And did whatever they wanted. And so it's just so funny to me because now it's like 30 years of people like, fuck your plans, Chris. And so this is the version of the characters. So we'll get into that in the third episode with Madeline Pryor, which is just, oh my God, that's yeah. so funny what, what so, she should so, have been. So this episode, Magneto own NBC and everybody. And he's, so yeah, this episode is, the two major plots in this episode are uh, Cyclops and Gene trying to leave and Magneto saying, fuck it, I'll go on trial. Which, right. once again, is straight from the comics. I mean, down to the costume he's wearing, everything. I want, And these are some of the first X-Men issues I ever bought. Was Magneto going on trial. He goes to Paris. He goes on trial for everything he'd done as a villain at that point. Which was, in the comics, hella shit. My nigga had sunken a Russian sub full of people. He raised a volcano in a Russian city, I think. He, I, I mean, this nigga was killing people left and right. So, be he like went that. up. He, it'd be like that. And basically, he said it'd be like that because I'm a mutant and y'all niggas try and kill me. So he went on trial. And in the comments, he's actually uh, pardoned of everything. And it went into this whole thing where he thought one of the judges was racist and they weren't. Like, he thought they hated mutants and they weren't. And so it was, you know, Magneto fucked up and he had to reconcile that not all people hate him just because he's a mutant. And people will believe his story of he's been persecuted his whole life. So he's just fighting back. So it was a really dope story in the comics, and I really love seeing it translated here. And I thought they did a, you know, once again, they condense everything. They get straight to it. I thought they did a, you know, admirable, admirable job with this. Yeah, I agree. And 
again with the dramatics and oh my even, god even, magneto i forgot also magneto is once to for me one step below when it comes to storm and the in the oration or maybe they're both on the same level with, oh they're, with they're, the they're way brother and that sister they in that. Expo- <laughs> the way they explain <laughs> shit and it'd be yes. the most mundane shit but the way they go into it i'm just like my god that's poetry yes. and and then again and then with the hair and all this other yes. stuff going on it's it's just <laughs> it's just phenomenal and and when you're watching this combined with everything else, it just gets you deeper into it. Like, it really gets you into the stories even more. Um, again, funny shit happening that maybe wasn't meant to be funny uh, in this episode. Um, especially, I understand what it was, specifically when Gene and Storm had that little sit down together. And Gene was trying to explain, look, man, you know, I'm I'm afraid for this world and what we're bringing our son into and you know the fact that he's going to be persecuted she had this conversation and i get it she is she wants better for her son she's a mutant this you know ah 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 i was fucking dying laughing as well cuz again i'm i'm t- taking it out of context of that story i'm just seeing a white woman tell a african do you know what it's like to be different <laughs> in america and I was fucking rolling, rolling. And I know that wasn't intention. Don't come at me. Don't at me with no, what the hell it was her. about. I know what it was about. I don't yeah. give a fuck. That shit was. Because it's still what it was about. No, it's and still it, yeah. That's still real. It's still like I just I was just like out of all. And again, that's her sister, right? That's the person that that understands her the most. So she gonna talk to her Storm. Mm-hmm. Fine, it makes. But in that context, when she was sitting there. I don't know, Gene, and then the world and the life and they hate us. I was like, that's an African you're talking to. What are you're you talking about? You're still white. About? <laughs> you know, you're still white. You're still like, white, but. Like, yeah, I mean, I know Scott shoots beams out of his eyes, but you're yes. pretty good. Like, you yes. can just walk around and, I mean, you can make it where niggas don't even know you're right. shooting beams and out again, of his eyes. My, my sentiments are out of context of that conversation and that specific story. I just found it hilarious. Mm-hmm. It was there. Um, oh, no, definitely. Um, now we mentioned this real quick, yeah. but I do want to talk about Rogue and Magneto because I love it. First of all, I love it. And I had to actually Google to see, cause like I said, I didn't watch every episode of the original series. I watched like the first three Was seasons. Was this in the original? Through. They had a no. fucking, like, they were fucking? Cause I don't no. remember that. No, it's not. It is directly from the comics though. Oh. Yes. So it's like they brought that story into this and because Rogue like has time where it could have happened. In her bat story, it was perfect. Right. So that was really dope to see. Uh, in the third episode, they get more into it with some direct call bats from the comments that we'll talk about in that one. But I just love that. I love that Magneto can touch her through the use of his powers. And a pe- I, I was going to say, and been touching her in that danger room day after and day, day after, after day. day. Morph, morph, when morph clock that shit, I was fucking going. I, yeah. I, he sent me to the fucking moon with that shit. Yeah. So I, I wanted to ask you about that. Is it because he's using that magnetism? Like, how was he able to? Because obviously, when they touch, you saw a little spark. So I was like, all right, something to do with the power. But what yeah, is it about I, that that he's able comics, to touch her? Comics, comics, because, okay, comics, okay. Like the the in the third episode, which we'll get into. In, I'll, I'll I'll explain more in the third episode. Let's just say that for that one. Okay. How they're doing it, I'm not sure in this, but I'll explain more in the third episode. Some theories and shit, I guess, about it. Um, wrapping up some stuff in this episode, Gene has the baby, which is, you know, the big moment that we've all been waiting for. She has little Nathan Christopher Summers, who grows up to be Cable in the comics, you know, sorry, spoiler for like a, you know, 40 year old not really character. a spoiler, but... Yeah, I mean, she's been around like 40 years now. Yeah, yeah so, Stop. um, yeah, he grows up to be Cable in the comics, and we'll see more of that directly in episode three. I also got to point out, because you pointed out some white woman and shit, I want to point out some woman and shit, that while she is being driven to the hospital, going through labor, Jean still has to lift people up with telekinesis <laughs> out of the way. Wolverine's because for some reason, ass. <laughs> Wolverine is completely incompetent. Like, you talk about some, now you talk about some goofy cartoon shit. That, that goofy was like, cartoon shit. I was that like, was some goofy. Thing, yeah. some shit that's no, that like, shit. that shit to be campy and 100%. Funny. 100%. Like, because. That was like some 80s cartoon shit. Like, that was like the stupid shit people used to do on Scooby-Doo. <laughs> like, that was just ridiculous. Like, why is he driving on the sidewalk suddenly? 
Like what? <laughs> like was it that serious? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess maybe you thought that would get him there faster if he just killed some people then, on the way. And, and then she, because she's in labor, with, and again she's telekinetic. She, she, she's ripping the 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 roof of the car is being ripped off, and I'm yes. just like, bro, are they gonna get there and anything? Like it was, they was going in on it. Then also, you didn't talk about what well, I didn't talk about. <laughs> Because this was also the episode where Storm lost her power, right? Yes. Okay. So another thing about the black woman, and and again, I don't remember if this was story. Well, I'm not going to say canon. If this was comic story. Yeah. Or was it like in the animation? But go on. Um, (laughs) That she, Storm of all people, is the one who catches it trying to. Trying to protect her bro. You know, her her brother in in oration. Mm -hmm. um, That she catches out of all of them. And again. You didn't know that? Only, only African. I, I vaguely remember. Like when oh, it happened, wow. I, when it happened, I was like, I had something hit in my head, but I wasn't sure. Mm. But beyond that, it just goes back to again as a black woman watching. I was just like, damn. Yeah. Why yo ass had to catch the L? And then Magneto with the single, you know, tear rolling down his eyes oh, you know, when beautiful. he was thinking about it. And then I got suspicious because I was just like. Was this his plan? And I was like, no, 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 that wasn't his plan. But was this his plan? Like, I started getting real suspicious mm. too, because I always get suspicious of shit like that, especially when the black woman got to take the L. I'm like, wait a minute, was this part of the plan to get right with the fucking government and all that stuff? No, and I don't was, think so. Cause that nigga I was about to that, murder I, I the government. I don't think so. <laughs> because my, my man, my man was very serious about his speeches, so I think yeah. he's, I think he is truly sad. But no, that nigga was purely about to murder the government over that shit. He and... was just like, he took his deep breath. He was just like. Y'all niggas is lucky I don't drop y'all where y'all stand. Like he's in the atmosphere with these niggas. Yeah. Um He should have dropped no. the uh, the fuck out of here person though. Yeah. <laughs> should have. He he should have dropped him. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, once again, this is straight canon from the comics. In fact, in the comics, Ro, I mean, Storm loses her powers because she's trying to stop Henry Peter Girich, uh, Guy Rich again, the always the dickhead. He has the neutralizer gun, which in the comments is created by Forge. I'm not sure okay. if they're going to do that here, but in the comments, Forge creates his gun because he created it to battle these creatures known as the Dire Race, who were this alien uh, race who was trying to create uh, take over the world. So he, but he used it to fight them. But then the government, of course, takes it and is like, oh, this works on mutants? Word. Bet. So Rogue at this point is a big time criminal. Most of the X-Men are, but Rogue but, but, some, but she's really on some She awesome. done some super wild shit at this point. So Henry Peter goes Future to track her shit. down and catches her slipping, shoots her with the gun once, but has it on the low setting for, you know, stun, and it doesn't really get her. So then he turns it up. She doesn't see him coming. Storm sees it, tries to push her out the way, and gets caught. He was and aiming for who? He was aiming for Rogue. Right. And he catches and, Storm. And like I said, that's why I said my mind was just like, something like this happened, but to whom and, to, yeah. and how? Uh, okay, so they switched who was in harm's way. Or, or, yeah, or. they switched who was, because there's two different storylines, like I said before, like that happened way before the trial of Magneto. Mm-hmm. The, you know, way before, years before, and, and I mean, years in real time and, you know, at least months before in common time. Yeah. And that was but, another scene where they did some firefighting, like fire action shit with fucking Magneto wrapping the things up and, and bringing in like literal like the crusade sword. swords down. Hate, it, it's the uh, the sword of Damocles. I'm, I'm not the sure. Sword Damocles, but, but, but he had like multiple. Yeah, the sword of Damocles. Yeah, multiple hanging swords, over the head. And then Rogue using that as as conductors, conducting stations to do and the that, lightning. I was like, ah! Another mutant circuit. Fuck them niggas up. Yeah. And then that circuit. shit happened. And then that shit happened. I was like, God damn, no, nah, she be gonna be all right, but damn. No, I'm and once I, again, like I said, you yeah, know what I said? Why don't you go to Wakanda? I just kept yelling, why don't you go to Wakanda? But well, you know. that might happen eventually too, because um that's part of this storyline, like I said, I should have known this was coming because they've announced ten of the titles and two of the episodes are called Life Death. And Life mm-hmm. Death are Big. The first one is all about Storm and Forge. It's when she finds out she's recovering with him, and then she finds out that he created the gun that took her powers. And it's why their relationship is one of my favorites, and it's also why they had one of the most fucked up relationships in comics. Very fucked up relationship. And then the second part of Life Death is when she goes back to Africa and reconciles who she is as 
this and woman who was raised in Africa, who became this thief, who became an ex man. Yeah, and that's why I thought this would push her sides. to go back and go so over there. It might, it might, you, they might do the Wakanda, and they might, but I don't think so because I think that'd be too big for them to have the whole Black Panther franchise in this. Mm-hmm. And I really don't want to see that. I'd rather see the relationship with Forge play out. I know that mm-hmm. I'm about to get. Daughter, you wouldn't. Be- no, I don't, nigga. I don't give a shit. Like, I don't care. You know, no, I don't want to see the only two black yeah. people that Marvel had at the time together. It never made sense to me, and it still doesn't. Yeah, and, uh, that, and, and that goes into episode three about the whole Stormforge love story. Yeah, or, or we'll get into all up. that. Yeah, but Storm to finish this episode up, uh, Magneto is pardoned. Storm writes the four page letter, tells everybody deuces. I'm out. <laughs> I did I'm want- not one of y'all no more. I'm, I'm not one of y'all niggas no more. I did love the shot of Nathan in the crib with all his stuff above him because it seems like for a second, like, oh, this nigga's already got telekinetics. And then it's like, no, he's just looking at the mobile above his crib. Mm. I love how they did that. And then at the very end, oh, no, God damn it. We got to mention this shit, man. All right. Wolverine is sitting there crying by himself in a tree. Damn. (laughs) Cold world. (laughs) Morph shows up with beer and chips. Wolverine's not interested until Morph turns into Sabretooth. Right. And then Wolverine jumps down and they start play fighting. They all kiki in together. Look, nigga, this is the weirdest sexual shit that is going on. I'm here. glad you said that because I felt sexual intention. Even when I think it was either this episode or episode before it's, when Morph was in No, it was this episode, no, three. episode three. Yeah. Okay, so we'll talk about that. But I mean, we'll, we talk about, about it, Morph. Yeah. When Morph goes into like the shower and he's looking and he thinking Wolverine's up in there, so then you know he's like, "Let me scratch going, your back," kind of going at him, you know, talking about it. let me scratch your back. Blah, blah, blah. There is obvious sexual tension between the two. For this, me. oh no, not for you, for everyone. And this goes back to the original series, and there was this big uproar when people found out that Morph would call himself a um more more they when they would yeah they they would dead yeah, not themselves they, okay. yeah they. They would refer to themselves as themselves. Non-binary. Non-binary. So there was a big uproar, and it was hilarious because, once again, your memories are not serving you well. Because I went back and rewatched it, and in one of the very first episodes, because Morph gets, like, not murdered, but that's been think he's dead for, like, the third episode. So he's well, not in it for a lot of it. That's or he's my not memory. Part of that I don't remember that nigga. <laughs> okay, but I, yeah, that's, but he's also, he... He shows up brainwashed. He's in a lot of the series, but I guess, you know, like I said, people don't remember him, but people did remember him, whatever, but pe- people who did remember him didn't remember the scene in the first series when he, when Wolverine traps him down at this bar after he's left the X-Men and Morph is like, I know what will bring you, you know, I know what really brought you here and turns into Jean Grey and attempts to kiss him. <laughs> so it's already been established that Morph has an attraction to Wolverine and is pretty much non-binary because he turned into, into Jean Grey. Is like, I'll kiss him as Jean Grey. Now, that's interesting and in and of itself. That's but manipulative the fact, too, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all kind of weird shit. But the fact that you turn into Sabretooth. Who yeah, is, that. All right, now, in the comics, Wolverine and Sabretooth have the most terrible relationship. Sabretooth is killed. Insane. Many people that Wolverine loves. There's actually a Sabretooth war going on right now in the comics. Where it's been said that Sabretooth, it's a love story in a way. It's a really fucked up love story, but he does love Wolverine in a fucked up way. So for Morph to turn into someone that Wolverine actively hates, <laughs> for someone that has killed people that Wolverine loves. But then they're kiki playing, fighting together. It's it's a hate fuck thing. And that's why I'm like, this thing is getting really weird sexually. Because it's like, Morph is like, oh, you want to... You know, really what you want is to, you know, give it to this man. They're both so very gonna... broken people. Remember there that. Like, oh, super. If they weren't as broken, perhaps they can have an actual relationship. But yeah. they have to do it through the guise of, as you said, hate fucking and, and just being weird and all this other crazy shit that Morph yeah. has been doing for the last three episodes. But I, I hope they fully keep on leaning into it. I, I'm pretty sure they are. But that was disturbing to me, honestly. I can't. I mean, not disturbing. It's just like, wow, this relationship is, you know, it's fucked. I, up. Like, it, I thought the Krakoa so had some weird sex shit in it. No, this it's is... toxic. It's, it's a toxic fucking relationship. And, and yeah. like I said, it could just if they, you know, if you were just true to yourself, then fine. But no, everyone wants to be fucking weird. And like we, you know, you mentioned that episode three real quick, and like he says this to Wolverine, like Wolverine is used to hearing this because <laughs> they've been doing it. <laughs> 
That danger room got them in there too. Y'all, y'all don't understand what be going on in that room. Yeah, that. I mean, look, nigga, you can make holograms of anything. When more that can lead to some wild. Press shit. that button, and for seven days straight, it said Rogue and Magneto. Yeah. Well, I mean, Listen. they had to recreate, and we'll get into that in that episode too, because that's all third shit as well. Uh, last but not least, at the end of this episode, Jean Grey's clone. For everyone, once again, this is, you know, 40 years of comics knowledge. Madeline Pryor shows up at the door. Soap opera. Soap opera. And the drama continues. And that's pretty much it for episode two. All my children. Days of our lives. (laughs) All my children was my shit, for real. (laughs) No, for real. That was my shit growing up. I love me some all my children. Oh, my God. I I know. My sister watched it, so, you know, I I did. My my mom too. watched it. Yeah, my mom and my sister watched it. That that children had dad on it. Boy, I loved all my children. Oh, my God. We will be back next week. Mm -hmm. We'll now be catching them all with you same time. What's that? Every Wednesday, right? I think so. Yeah. I think so. I thought they would have gone with Saturday. I mean, like March 27th, April 3rd. Are those Wednesdays? Yep. Yeah. They can't it feels like a Wednesday. Because Saturday would just be weird for them, you know. Saturday? Like Saturday morning to our cartoons? Yeah, that's what I thought they would do, you know. Emulate that feeling. Bring it, bring her back. Fuck out of here. No. no. Wednesdays. And, uh, and this is also a little too grown for Saturday morning cartoons, too, <laughs> to be honest. Like, let's be it's real. It's too outrageous. This, um, yeah, it, it, but, like, they got saber tooth and morph doing weird sex. Shit. You can't <laughs> have that on Saturday morning but cartoons. But I, I, I am very much enjoying the series. Like I mm-hmm. said, like... it. it Great pacing, great storytelling, e- even in a more contemporary, at least, images, Yeah, they, the animation. The, the but compression it's, of these classic you know, stories is crazy. But, but it's very much, in, as I said earlier, or, or I said it way back in episode one, this is very much informed by the 90s yes. stories and that 90s camp and, and approach. And I, lo- I, I love it. it. It worked out for me. Yeah. I know you, you had your reservations, and as but like you know, it took you a second. But you it know, took me a second. But yeah, that I was get entirely it. my fault. Yeah, <laughs> like me, I was prepped because I went back and watched the original. And I was like, oh, okay, this is where we're at, you know. And mm-hmm. I knew it wouldn't be, you know, I know none of the X Men are just going to get murdered off. You know, it's not going to get like that. You know, it's not going to be that real yet. You know, I don't think so. I don't think so. Met the man for Bishop. Do you Artists, remember I, that? I know. I never. <laughs> Ain't no fucking way. Never. No. He wanted it too, you know. I know. And the thing is, Method's a good actor. You don't think he could do it? It's one of those things where it's like, it's just, I'm just trying to see Method Man. You know, I'm never going to see Bishop. I mean, Bishop got the M right here. You know what I'm saying? I know it's the Rook, but I mean, he got the M. I'm just I saying. Just never, I don't know, man. I just, as much as I like Method as an actor, I still always see Meth. You know, even when he's playing that lawyer on. No, I mean, the lawyer on power, he is definitely. Not He's the lawyer. Okay. Yeah, he is the evil lawyer of power. So maybe, you know, maybe he could do Bishop. <laughs> maybe. And he's older now where, like, the grizzledness of Bishop, you know, might work. I don't know. He just looks too light skin. Am I racist? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bishop just chopped to me, you know? Like, I'm sorry. You know? I'm sorry, man. You know? I don't know. Fan pros. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Ben Amin, and thank you for watching that video that you just watched. Make sure you hit the buttons below, you know, that like, that subscribe, do all that right now.